Hey guys, welcome back to a very special edition of the Chuckload of Comics show, your source for the geeky headlines, the nerdy news, everything happening in the world of fandom. We try to break it down for you right here on YouTube and at the much larger chuckloadofcomics.com. If this is your first time to the channel, guys, take a second, click that subscribe button and join us here every single week for all the fun. Speaking of fun, we spent last weekend at the final Wizard World ever. Wizard World convention is no longer happening. We were at the last one in Chicago. It is so strange to say that out loud now that it is over but big thank you to the people at wizard world and the people at fan expo for uh welcoming us with open arms we were on the creative stage we were uh, hosting celebrity q a interviews uh cosplay demos we had some of chicago's greatest podcasters on the stage all weekend long we had such a blast so that's what we're going to do this week we're going to share with you some of these celebrity q a interviews that we did this one i am so excited about we got to sit down with hercules himself the incredible hulk Mr. Lou Ferrigno, it was such a blast. The audience loved it. There was a huge crowd for it. Uh, Lou doesn't do a lot of panels. It's just kind of not his bag. But he came over to us the next day and said, what a blast he had. So I hope you enjoy this. This is our conversation with Mr. Lou Ferrigno. Check it out. Welcome back to Chicago, sir. Thank you. Uh, by, by the way, I've been uh, I'm filming now a major, major miniseries called The, Off it's the Making of the Godfather. A Paramount Plus. You're going to love it. I'm playing Lenny Montana, Lucy Brassi. We have a great group of great actors, a huge cast, and it's all about how The Godfather got made, dealing with the mobsters and the, you know, Paramount Studios. It's a 10-episode miniseries, Paramount Plus. I'll be filming to January. So if you get a chance, check it out. It's going to be huge. You're going to love it. I wanted to ask you about that, guys. It's called The Offer. It's directed by Dexter Fletcher, who you know did uh, the movie Rocket Man. It's got an all-star cast. Miles Teller is in it, uh, Giovanni Ribisi, Dan Fogler, Colin Hanks, and it's about the making of The Godfather. Juno Temple, yeah. What's interesting, Dexter Fletcher filmed the first episode. Every episode is 27 days. We have like 10 different directors. One of the directors is, is uh, Alan Arkin's son. Really? The last one we have right now, his name is Colin uh, Buske. He directed Fargo. So okay. we have a list. We have a classical uh, director. It's, it's, it's incredible because it takes place in 1967, 70, and it's like a period piece. You see, uh, they built like a Mulberry Street. Every detail, the clothing, everything, fabulous. And what's the character you're playing in the offer? Lenny Montana. Lenny Montana? The hitman. He's a hit. I was going to ask, is he a hitman? Is he a murderer? Is he a bodybuilder? In real life, he was a murderer. He was a, uh, a wrestler. Wow. He was a hitman. And then, you know, of course, they say he kills his own mother. Nice guy, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, you can find the offer on Paramount Plus in 2022. Yeah, and I can't say too much about it because uh, it's confidential, but it'll be Paramount Plus, probably might get maybe the spring or maybe early summer. i uh, uh, probably Netflix. The same, uh, same time uh, uh, zone at Yellowstone, the TV series. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, very, very awesome, guys. We're going to do some audience Q&A a little bit later on, so... A little bit, you know, maybe in about 15 minutes or so, if you want to start lining up at that microphone right to the side of the stage, you can ask Lou a question. Just please keep your mask on when you do so. So you've got hundreds of names and credits to your IMDb, but really the name Lou Ferrigno is synonymous with one character in particular. I mean, the portrayal of the gamma-infused uh, hero, the Incredible Hulk. Can we get a round of applause for the original Thank you. Incredible Hulk? I want to ask you, what does it feel like to be the last actor who will ever play the Incredible Hulk, not CGI, just as himself? Well, I'm very glad because when I did the Hulk, I was 26 years old, and it was perfect because you had Bill Bixby. To me, he was the perfect David Banner, and of course, my physicality was perfect for the part. Not because of the CGI, it's not quite connecting like the original Hulk that I played because it needs to be authentic, organic. But the CGI, it going, I think eventually it has to come back. But the original series I've done, every episode had a laser compelling message about light. When you watch a show, even today, like the original Twilight Zone, you learn something. There was no excessive violent bloodshed or sex, stuff like that. So that's why I think it will go till the time I pass on because it's a beautiful show. And Bixby was phenomenal. He did perfect. I want to ask you about Pitt Bixby. I mean, in 1993, I mean, he's a great actor. We lost him uh, quite tragically. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Because I've heard what a great guy he was. Uh, what a wonderful person, amazing actor. Can you tell us about working with Bill Bixby? Did you guys work on set together much? Yes, because Bill was in pre-law. Then uh -huh. he decided to go to acting, and uh, he's done like five TV series. I've done uh, 
together, Bill and I, we did the, uh, the, the episode Married, where the dream sequence you see Bill and I in the desert. Bill faces That's right, the, the desert home. episode, yeah. yeah. Bill was great. He was a great actor, producer, and director. So a couple of times when he directed the show, I was ecstatic because who would be a better director than him? The last two, two shows we filmed in Vancouver. I didn't like the last episode, which was the death of the Hulk, because we were planning to come back when they find one blood cell, they bring him back to life. It's called the Revenge of the Hulk. But unfortunately, he passed on at the age of 59. Yeah. You know, he had prostate cancer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, um, walk us through a day in the life of Lou Ferrigno on set at the Incredible Hulk. I mean, obviously, tell us about the makeup procedure. Because the makeup really, really looks good. It doesn't look like it's not shiny. It doesn't look, uh, you know, fake. What does your shower look like at the end of each day? Well, the shower, the green shower <laughs> they built in the motorhome. I'll be the first one on the set and the last one to leave. What's interesting that their makeup took like three and a half hours to put on. For the face, they put appliances, they used spear gum glue, and they used grease makeup, they powder it down. The body was pancake makeup. And then after the makeup was completed, they brought another crew in, they do the wig, the eyes, and teeth. You wonder why I was so pissed. Right, yeah. But when you know when they finished the makeup, the character was beautiful. The first time I did the Hulk, the pilot, I was looking in the mirror. I never acted before. I said to myself, what am I doing? <laughs> I said, am I insane? Because I gave a training for the Mr. Olympia competition in mm-hmm. 1977. I took the chance to do the pilot because at the time, Spider-Man and Captain America failed as a TV series. So the Hulk took yeah. off and the rest is uh, history. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's pretty hilarious. Um, well, you know, you've spoken in the past how you aren't really a fan of the way the MCU has treated the Incredible Hulk. I actually kind of agree with you. I'm personally, I know a lot of people disagree, but I'm not a big fan of the smart Hulk, the talking Hulk, the Professor Hulk in the MCU. I like my Hulk the way he was in the first Avengers movie. Angry, you know, mad, rageful. Do you think they're ever going to go back to that? That's a, that's a good question because the way we portrayed the smart Hulk... Uh, it wasn't the Hulk. It, it, it should, you want to be the Hulk, but it wasn't because the Hulk had to be uh, hideous. Yeah. You know, like uh, angry, uh, like, like an alter ego of, De- of Bruce Banner, David Banner. But the last one, the Avengers, I think if they continue, then, uh, then I think they have to find something. Uh, uh, maybe go to a She-Hulk or something. But I didn't like the way it portrayed. I'm not a big fan of CGI because yeah. it's not as believable. Like Star Wars, it may work for, but not the Hulk. Yeah, well, I'm not very excited about She-Hulk. I'm glad you brought that up. But uh, there's one thing Mark Ruffalo has never done. We got a clip that we want to show you guys real quick. Sean, you better a clip queued up for something Mark Ruffalo couldn't quite handle. He's a good actor, though. That's right. Mark Ruffalo never wrestled a bear once. a little bit about the uh, <laughs> it's probably not uh, when you the scene where you wrestled the bear um, everyone what, loves that what we, I mean it's, it's it's a question that you answer all the time because it's such an iconic scene well you know it's funny they said to me I had to do a scene with the bear it was a baby bear the bear weighs 650 pounds it's like <laughs> me standing in front of a wall the biggest problem we had is every time I came out underwater with the bear they kept had the green makeup people on the bear's face and the bear was <laughs> licking the makeup so we had to constantly wipe down the face over it, it literally took all day in that river with the bear yeah i said to myself i never want to fight a bear i never want to be near a bear i never want to <laughs> be with a bear as long as i live most people don't want to fight bears no but this one was so strong a 600 with the baby bear i couldn't even move it i really? mean one time he moved his arm he literally just whacked me i went flipping over right into how do they throw the the fake bear? They use uh, some kind of uh, like with a, like a like a dummy prop. Yeah. It was very funny because when I did the movie Hercules, yeah, they had another bear. I threw it out of space. <laughs> this bear in, in, in the in the pilot, I threw it over the river. For some reason, they like to connect me with bears. I don't know why. I mean, you know. Uh, like you said, it's a very iconic scene. Yeah. Um, any fans of Hercules out there? Has everybody seen the movie Hercules? I swear, it's it's you know everybody thinks of you as Incredible Hulk, but the movie Hercules is a phenomenal, phenomenal film. I actually want to show. We actually have the trailer. If anybody out there, raise your hand if you've never seen Hercules. The great. Okay, we got just wow. Everybody's seen Hercules. I filmed out of Rome, Italy. We filmed around all the ruins and everything. I I worked very hard to be in the best shape of my life because anytime you're on film, it's permanent. You can't go back and change it. I was 280 pounds ripped, 
But when you film like for three months on the location, I literally had to be in the same shape from the first day to the last day. So it, I, I, would, I would train every morning like for an hour and a half, yeah. literally dieting. But I enjoyed the role because after the Hulk, as a kid, I admired Steve Reeves, the original Hercules. I've always wanted to play Hercules. So at least that was after the Hulk. So, so since then, I've done over 40 films and five TV series, but everybody loves the Hulk. Yeah. I oh, mean, they absolutely do. But what was it like going from the small screen to the big screen on Hercules? Well, you got to remember one thing. When I began the Hulk, I had, at the time, I had a speech impediment. Mm-hmm. And I had to overcome it virtually my, my growing up. I just had a cochlear implant there six months ago. But, to, but the Hulk was a training platform for me because I didn't know anything about actors. I learned about the cues, about the camera, where to stand in front of the camera. So five years, I've learned a lot. I ended up doing theater. Then eventually I did Hercules. So from Hercules, I decided to do other film. But the most important thing is I want to be a trained actor. Mm-hmm. When I first began the Hulk, but the good news about the Hulk, when I did, it was it's called pantomime. That means acting when I was speaking. Easily, I was able to show the emotion through the makeup. That's what made the creature so lovable. Yeah. Like, for example, the original Frankenstein. Still today, you know they can't duplicate it. Yeah. But the way he played was perfect. Villains, you love the villain. That's why now you have the new Frankenstein, like Francis Ford Coppola, but mm-hmm. nothing matched the original because he was perfect for that part. Yeah. And that's something that you have to be in that character to play it. Well, we want to go ahead and start opening things up to Q&A. Sure. Uh, we have a mic right over there. If you have a question, please keep your mask on when you're doing the Q&A. No, pull your mask because the, uh, the, vo- the voice gets muscle. I can read your lips. Belay that. Yes. Okay, whatever. You can pull your mask down. We're not going to kiss you. Don't worry. Speaking about the bear, um, like on that show, they had you like lift an eye beam. They had you rip a car door off. What do you feel was the most like just colossal feat that they had you do? Because there weren't CGI; it was just practical effects. In the they first pilot, off. when you see me turning the car, that was four o'clock in the morning. The first time I did it, they had the explosion. I had almost like a second degree burn on my chest. So they brought me back up to do the sequence again. I was so angry, so mad. Of course, the car had no engine, but literally, I was able to turn and flip it over. Because the, because the, the You're saying there was no pumps, no pneumatics? No. It was just you in the yes, car. the director said this was the last shot before the sun comes up. You either become the Hulk or you either fail. And I didn't have a choice. So that was the most colossal, most powerful scene I've done. <laughs> Thank you. That is awesome. Um, you do a lot of charity work. Yes. Um, you work with the Muscular Dystrophy Foundation, the Starkey uh, Hearing Foundation. Any advice you would give to uh, young, aspiring actors who are maybe overcoming um, you know, yes, any sort of right physical difficulty? Yes, because right now Hollywood is accepting diversity. That means people that are blind, wheelchairs, they have a chance to act. Like, for example, people that have deaf actors, they could play deaf actors, not actors playing deaf actors. Because there's room for everyone. Because there's so much emphasis on racial stuff, everything. But we forget it. We leave out the diversity. That's why it, right now they're embracing it, which is great because growing up, I've always been typecast, always been told to me, like, you have a hearing speech issue, we cannot hire you. So all that is changing now. And that's why important thing in life, what you have, all you can do is maximize your personal power because you could be the best you can be. Everything is secondary. Remember that because I've learned as a kid that I, had, I, I didn't want to take a second seat to anyone. I was a warrior. I didn't want to be second place. My father always said to me, if you had your hearing, you'd be this and be that. I didn't want to carry his pain. So what I did, I maximized my personal power. I just started that bodybuilding fitness with my passion. That took me on my journey. That's why any of you have any passion, embrace it. That's what makes you powerful because you want to choose something that's not connected with you. Cheers to that. Um, tell us about your time with bodybuilding. Like, what, what was it like back in the 70s with uh, you and Arnold? Um, like, like what, was, what was that time period like? It was great and, and because and back then, uh, today, if you win Miss Olympia, it's $400,000. Okay, when I competed with Arnold, do you know how much first prize was? Uh, $750. What? Yes. And we had to work for a living. We, you know, we were laying on the beach. But I remember Arnold came on the scene. I emulate him because he was the first bodybuilder over six feet to be a champion. So it opened the doors for me. But at the age of 22, I was on stage with him because I wanted to be with the best. And you know, when you grow up with someone as an idol, you respect that because what he's done for bodybuilding. So this way, when I competed with him like pumping iron, Mm -hmm. we put bodybuilding on the map. Because back then, everybody didn't know what the sport was. I like muscle guys. 
So at the time, you know, it was very ch- ch- charismatic. Yeah. So I, d- I didn't realize you uh, you idolized Arnold Schwarzenegger as much as you did. Was he just like a hero, hero of yours? Yeah, because time? he came from the, another country, couldn't speak English, and people made fun of him. He had a space between his teeth. They said he's this and that stuff. And he's a very smart man. He became a governor and became a, a movie star. So I respect what he's done because it gave me motivation that even though you have uh, what you call setbacks, that you can overcome that. Like, for example, when I did the Hulk series, at the time they would not hire bodybuilders to be actors because they're too muscular. So like Stallone Arnold, they broke the door, they broke the barrier that it's okay to have a muscular body and act. Yeah. So I respect that. Well, you broke down a few doors the first yourself time. on the Hulk, yeah. physically and uh, <laughs> figuratively. Exactly. We have, we have another audience Q&A. Hi, Lou. Uh, How are you? you mentioned earlier your, the, the movie on which you were in the best shape of your life. I'm curious if you remember, and I'm sure that you do, the day that you woke up and you were like, this is it. This is peak physical appearance and performance. Like, I'm sure that's in your mind. Can you, can you point to that one day? You mean when I got in that condition? I, I mean, like, the, the day where you were in the best shape of your life. The day I was in the best shape. I, unfortunately, I could not win the Mr. Olympia because I took a break from bodybuilding to make the movies like The Hulk. One day I woke up at the age of 42 and I said I didn't want to come back to bodybuilding because it was unfinished. So at the age of 42, I trained to make a comeback and I was in the best shape of my life at 43. It, to me, that's a good question because that fulfilled me because if I haven't done that, it would have been unfinished business. There would be a hollow part of me saying that if, if, I don't believe in the word if. I never like in life if, if, if. So for me, if becomes positive, I just do it. I get knocked down, I get up. In life, we have challenges. So to me, for one time, I wouldn't be in that best condition. I had a chance to use it and be that condition once before I uh, walk away and retire. Thank you, Lou. You're Thank welcome. you so much. Anybody else in the audience Q&A? I want to ask you about the show King of Queens. That was a great show. What an amazing like character you played in yeah. th- that show. Tell us about your time on that show, but more importantly, how did you get that role? Did they know they wanted Lou Ferrigno to be the next door neighbor? Well, I did a movie with Rodney Dangerfield and Tom DeLuise called, uh, I forgot the name, uh, and then anyway, one day the producer of King and Queen watched it one evening and said, why not have Lou to be a neighbor on the show? So they had this one episode. And they phoned me. They said, we want to do uh, have you on the show, but, but it's about you. You play yourself. I said, sure, because I've always wanted to do comedy. So because I did the first episode, I ended up having a recurring role for seven years. The interesting thing about when you do comedy in front of a live audience, like a hundred some people, you only have two takes. And you have to be on the ball, and you can't just do it four or five times because you're in front of a live audience. But I just love the writing, like Jerry Stiller, like those actors, mm-hmm. the iconic actors, like Lee Remini and uh, you know Kevin Kevin Smith. They're f- phenomenal to work yeah. with. But it's interesting. Most comedians in real life are very subdued, but you work on the screen, they come to life. But just yeah. But I had a blast. It was great. Yeah, it's great. Any any uh, future television plans? Um, obviously, you got the Paramount Plus thing, but uh, right now, bes- filming in January, I'm, I'm exclusive to that. And afterwards, I'll be doing another film. But I'm very excited about this series because right now, it's the 50th anniversary of The Godfather. The Godfather is the greatest movie ever made, but but now we have all these actors playing Pacino, De Niro, yeah. uh, Robert Evans, and Margaret, like Juno Temple. Uh-huh. She's playing Betty, like different. So it's wonderful to see that. They relive it again. It's a historical piece. I'm very, very excited about the offer. Any uh, cameos from other uh, people who are actually in The Godfather that I can't are made? You can't say. It'd be a big surprise. You'll, you'll, be, you'll be impressed. That's great, man. Guys, it's called The Offer. You got to check it out. Just Google it. Uh, look at it up. Lou, thanks so much for being here. Do we have any more audience Q&A? All right, Lou. All right, Lou. Thank you. Guys, Lou's table is right over there. Thank you. Thank Yo. you. You've done a great job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tomorrow. Head on over to Lou's Thank table. Thank you for coming. Health is your greatest wealth. Thank you, Lou. Thank you.